Friends, we have talked a lot about volcanoes on our channel and have dedicated several videos to them in the past, but these fascinating natural phenomena deserve our continued attention. In this new video series, we will break down the different phenomena that accompany the volcanic activity. In the first episode, we will look at one of the most dangerous phenomena, which is destructive lahars. We will discuss what a lahar is, how it forms, and also give some examples of destructive lahars from the past. Welcome to a new video on Top Topics channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and let's get going on to the new video. Lahars are among the most destructive phenomena that accompany the volcanic activity. It is a powerful flow of mud and debris composed of liquefied periclastic material, huge boulders and water. The material flows from the volcano, usually along river valleys. Lahars are extremely destructive. They can travel at speeds of tens of meters per second and have the ability to destroy any structures in their path. While the immediate vicinity of volcanoes, which is most vulnerable to eruptions, usually remains free of permanent settlement. The wider area around the volcano is more often densely populated due to the fertile soil. People may believe that the threat of a volcano is lower in these more remote areas, but this is a mistake. Lars, therefore, have a more considerable destructive potential in these areas, particularly because of their rapid and wide flow. Lahars can vary in density and composition and are divided into three types. The first type of lahar has the character of near-normal water flow, where the sediment concentration is less than 30%. These lahars look like a turbid streams of water. The second type of lahar is the so-called hyperconcentrated flow where the sediment concentration is between 30 and 60%, and the lahar appears as a thick nut flow. The third type of lahar is the so-called debris flow, where the sediment concentration exceeds 60%. Such a lahar looks like more than an avalanche of moving powerful stones. There are several triggering mechanisms that lead to lahar. The most typical cause is the melting of snow and ice on the summits of high volcanoes. Due to magma or hot pyroclastic flows, lava erupts from open vents and mixes with wet soil. Mud and snow on the volcano slope to form a very viscous high-energy lahar. The higher up the volcano, the greater the gravitational energy, and therefore, the more destructive potential the lahar will have. Another cause may be heavy rain in the vicinity of the volcano. Heavy rainfall can mobilize unconsolidated pyroclastic deposits. Although lahars are typically associated with the effects of volcanic activity, they can therefore occur without any volcanic activity if conditions are suitable for the collapse and movement of mud originating from existing volcanic ash deposits. Snow and glaciers can also melt during periods of mild to hot weather, again without the influence of volcanic eruption. An earthquake under or near a volcano can also cause a lahar, which can release material and cause it to collapse into adjacent volcanic lakes, rupturing them and triggering a destructive lahar. There have been some very destructive lahars in recent history. On 24 December 1953, the largest railway accident in New Zealand's history known as the Tongabai disaster occurred. Lahar from the slope of Ruhapeu volcano severely damaged the railway bridge over the Wangaheo River at Tangabai. Shortly after which, the Wellington Auckland night train passed over the bridge and crashed into the mud flow. 151 people lost their lives. Some of the victims were never found. On 29 December 1971, a lahar with a total length of 14 kilometers, 128 meters wide, and up to 8 meters high, was formed up onto the slope of Villarica volcano, which is 2,847 meters above the sea level in Chile. 
Lahar during the eruption of Mount St. Helens volcano on 18th May 1980 contributed greatly to the scale of the devastating disaster. An avalanche of mud and rocks and ash raised down the slope at speeds of up to 75 meters per second and covered a distance of more than 25 kilometers. On 13th November 1985, a lahar from the eruption of the Nevado de la Ruiz volcano in Colombia caused the second largest volcanic eruption disaster in 20th century. A torrential wave up to 5 meters high reached the town of Armero. 28,700 people died. In March 2007, as in 1953, the lahar from the Ruhapeyo volcano spilled. There was no threat to life in this case because the authorities in the area along the Buhageo river took effective measures in time and the population was warned. Scientists and governments are trying to identify areas at higher risk of lahars based on historical events and computer models. Volcanic scientists played a key role in effective hazard education by informing officials and the public about realistic hazard probabilities and possible scenarios for future lahars. As an early warning of an approaching lahar is crucial for the timely evacuation and survival of the inhabitants of the affected area. Folks, that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. In the next part of this series on volcanoes, we will explain all about dangerous pyroclastic flows. Thanks and have fun!